Okay, just going to go over what uh, Kodu is all about, introduce you to it if you haven't come across it before. Uh, it's a nice thing to do and it's educational as well, but it's also quite good fun because you're making games with it. So the actual description here from Mogsoft is Kodu can teach creativity, problem solving, storytelling as well as programming. It's good for young children as well as adults. Uh, you don't need to uh, do much on the uh, like know before about the design or the programming skills because actually I'll go through some of it anyway. So your first job to get it, I'll show you actually just a little example. Here is some of the things that you can do. So it's all 3D. It's a bit, a little bit like Minecraft. You can do the. There's loads of different types of games you can make into it. Um, that's just a little examples. You go there, moving around, and here are some of the actual screenshots of some of the things you can do. So it's all quite 3D like. Nothing is there to start with, it's all blank. You have to make the whole game yourself. I'm going to go over a racing game, but there is different ones you can do. For instance, there's a football, um, loads of different types. Okay, so I'm going to download it. All you do is go to Google and you type in Kodu. First link, top left corner, get Kodu. It is free, so it's a bit of an older program. It's 2009. There are newer types of games that do coding, but they cost you money. So this one is free. So I'm going to download it now and then get back to you. Okay, now it's loaded up on my computer, so you can download this. Uh, it's for PCs because it's actually made by Microsoft. Uh, there's a video to watch to start with, and it just says you actually make the games rather than just playing them, so you're actually doing everything. Uh, to start with, uh, the, you don't need to sign in, so you can just press cancel on that. It doesn't matter too much. Uh, right, so he is Kodu. Okay, so we want to make a new world. There are ones that have already been done by the community that you can always look at as well, but we're going to make a new one. There are three maps to choose from to start with. I always just choose the blank one. Uh, when you're making a game, you've got to think about how it actually works as the program and what you need it to do, what characters, what's the layout going to be, the design of it. You also need to think, okay, what's the objectives, what are the outcomes and what are the obstacles? They're called the three O's. So uh, basic, I'm just going to go do the basics. I'll show you a race track as well and how to do it and do a two player game on it and how to code it and everything as well. So here are the basics at the bottom. Home tab just goes back straight to the home menu. If you want to play your game, you have to press the play button. The hand here, if you left click, you can move around like that. If you right click, you can rotate up and down. Okay, So left click is that way, right click is up and down. There's characters to put in, we'll come back to them. There's paths you can do. Uh, so this is the landscape tool, so you click onto that. And literally just left click and you can just draw whatever landscape you want to do. You can right click to delete it off. You can choose different ones, so if you click up here, I use the arrow keys, or you can use the wheel mouse to scroll and look through, but you can just press left and right on the arrows on the keyboard, and you can select different patterns, so you can get all creative. And can, if I'm going to do a racing game, I'll do a start section, then I'll do an end bit. Uh, there's different shapes you can do on the landscape as well. So left click makes it, right click takes it out. You can do hills as well. So you could do volcanoes and stuff as well. So if I just have a bit there, uh, you can make a hill go around and you can pop it all the way up. There's different types of hills and different shapes on the hills as well. You can have a flat hill or very high peaks. I'll show you that one because it looked like that. To uh, put them back down again, you just right click and it goes back down. If you have any problems with them at all, because they can play up a little bit in places, just right, just go back to the landscape one and just right click. You can just take them back out again if you so wish. Um, okay, so right click is always the reverse. Uh, if I do the hills the second and then just show you those bits, if I make it so there's a little dip in the middle, I can actually fill it with water. And you can actually choose different ones here as well, so you could have like lava. Uh, again, you can either use the wheel mouse on the top, on the top, or you can use the arrow keys to go across them. Here's the lava one. I'll just do normal water. To be fair, let's click on the water again. Let's get back up. Water. Uh, if you fill it up, it fills up. But if it spills over, it's like paint. It just comes over the top. Left click to go up. Right click to bring it back down. It is possible to make characters go in the water and have a water type game. So your objective to start with is to make an actual race course. 
So you can either have it as a circle going round back on itself, although that can cause problems because some people might, it's possible to cheat and go back to the end. Or you can just have a straight line or whatever you want. You can have little islands on it if you so wish. There's loads of different stuff you can do. I'm going to make my island. Uh, make my race track and then I'll get back to you on that one um, and I'll show you how you do the actual coding then but you can just do the design get creative do what you want it's quite easy to make the race course you just left click everywhere okay okay so I've done my race track very simple one uh, there's gonna be my end okay so my objective um, I'm gonna have obstacles all the way around it so the objective is obviously to get there first and uh, I'm going to put my obstacles in the middle. It's going to be obstacles anyway because I've obviously got uh, an area here which I could fall down. But you need to program that as well. Actually, just I'll go through that in a second. So I've put all my things together. So I'm, what I need to do now is actually put the characters into it. Okay. So I forgot to mention you do have to look around. Obviously, so the left you have to keep clicking between these menus all the time. So the hand here you have to keep pressing left to go around and then right if you need to look at certain things. To scroll in and out is the wheel mouse, so I can just do that to go in. Right, so the characters, this is where the coding comes in. You click on, you have to click on Kodu here, and then you have to click where you want to place it. So if I click over to here, okay, I've got another menu that comes up now. The ones with the black edges on them means there's extra things in there in particular. Now, all the characters do different things. So for instance, Kodu can fly, but he can't jump. Um, Rover can't jump, he does scanning of stuff so you can get him to actual program to scan certain things. There is, I use the cycle guy quite a lot, here's the cycle guy. Some are just underwater characters like the sub, so if you fill up the whole thing with water they're only going to work in those bits. The cycle obviously, he's quite good because he's quite fast, he's got wheels on him, he jumps quite high but you can use any of them to be honest but I use the cycle guy. There he is, if I zoom in with the wheel mouse. Um, so, I press every single. If you get stuck on something, it opens up a menu. There it is at the top, uh, up here. There's little keys that tell you exactly what you need to be doing. A lot of the time, especially if I play the game here, I just press escape. You see, that it says press escape on the keyboard, and it goes back to normal then. So escape's used a lot to get off the menus. Right. So I've got to click on the character thing here again to select him. Okay. If I'm selected here, I can't select him at all. So I have to click on that. And then when I put my mouse over, you can see they've got colours across the top. I can press left and right on the arrow keys, or the wheel mouse again. Um, the left and left and right on the arrow keys, and I can just select the colours. That's good if you want them different colours for two player. If I right, if I left click on him, I can just move him around. If I right click, I can program him. Okay, so I can change his settings as well. So I'm just going to program him. It's very simple on the coding. Uh, it's not too difficult. It's it's for younger years sometimes. It's for year seven, year six, year five. Use it. Uh, so when um, you can do a gamepad actually, the Xbox gamepad works for this. But I'll do a keyboard uh, on the keyboard, and then you click on the plus again. You've got extra options, and on the plus here I can do um, some arrows. And then if I do with this one now, it says not, so I don't really want that. So on the do, I'm just going to do move. Now there are other options in this plus again, I can make him move quickly in that, but it doesn't really matter as long as he's moving. Uh, what else I can do is do keyboard, and I can also do, uh, on the keyboard I can choose it to have the space bar, and when you press the space bar for instance, I can get him to do something, I can get him to shoot, and I can get him to shoot blips, and I can shoot and colours, and rainbow colours. So there's loads of little options on the shoot. So keyboard space, when those things are done, the do things will happen. So I press escape, I do now. It says here, press escape, there, return, to go back. And now if I press play, I can just test it. I want to zoom in a little bit. Uh, so arrow keys, up and down is move. And now if I press the space bar, it should shoot blips that have different colours, which it does. So to make it a proper game, I need to have an ending on it. So what I'm going to do is use the hand to get over to here. And all I do is click on the character thing again. And I'm going to put in this time a castle. This is the easiest way to do it. And then scroll all the way back. And then if I click back onto him now, program him. Very simple. When he, uh, loads of options in here, you can go mad with it. 
bumps into, and I've just put in the castle. So let's go to objects and the castle. What I want it to do is to do a game, right, and to win. Okay, so now I've got an actual outcome. So if he bumps into the castle, he wins. Here's my other ones. I've just been coding him. Now, if I wanted to, I could go over to the castle and code the castle. So there's possibilities of doing that. I click on the character one again. Then I can select that and I can program that. I can change the settings and stuff. I can change the size. I can rotate it. I can do loads of different things with it. But let's just, um, in fact, what I might do is right click on him, change his settings. I'm just going to make him a bit faster, accelerate a little bit more, and I'll press escape, press play, zoom in a little bit. So now, if I, he has gone faster, change the settings of him, it's probably a bit too fast. If I just go around, and this is only one player, if I, two player I could put in more characters. And if I bump into the castle, I should win. There you go. Press escape, goes back. So it does work. Uh, the uh, To make it more of a challenge, he doesn't fall down here at the moment. So what I need to do is just go to the last section on here, the world settings, and I'm just going to turn off this glass wall. So now it makes it a little bit harder. If I just go around and say, let's just pretend I'm going straight off the edge, and it does a game over, and it goes, disappears. There you go, those are the basics of it, those are a real simple game. You can add in more characters, you can add in more landscape, you can add in loads of different, just click on that each time, click to where you want to place it, and there's loads of things you can do, collections, loads of different things you can do with it.